Hello everyone and welcome to Educers Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are back on our radiology console and as always we are going to discuss a scan and correlate it clinically. So first we will go through the scan. I will not tell you the findings. You can identify the different findings that are there. There are a lot of findings in this scan and it's a definite exercise in radiology. If you know this scan well, a lot of things will be clear for you when it comes to identifying different pathologies in CT abdomen. So identify the face, try to identify as many problems as you can in the scan and then we will discuss the findings. As we always say, the important point to note in this series of radiology is that you need to see the scans on console with your radiologist and that can give the best outcomes to the patient and you will not miss findings and your radiologist also will not miss findings if you incorporate this into your daily practice. Right, so I am sure most of you would have guessed the disease as well as a lot of findings in this disease by now. So no points for guessing in the thoracic part. You can see pleural effusion on both sides. You can see air bronchogram on the right side more than the left. This is air bronchogram, the suggestive of collapse of the lower lobe. Right, so you can see air bronchogram, you can see collapse of the lung, you can see fusion on both sides, effusion on both sides. As you go down, you can see ascites. So this is liver, this is the diaphragm, and between these two is the ascites, there is fluid density. So ascites, bilateral effusion, lower lobe consolidation. You can see a structure in the stomach which can be a Riles tube or an attempted nasojejunal tube. So when you have a tube of this kind, you have to confirm where the end of the tube is, where the tip is. You can see again the tube in the esophagus, this part. So definitely it's a nasogastric or a nasojejunal tube. So that also you have to note, right? That's also an important point. You can see a lot of stranding in this area, fat stranding in the abdomen. There is a big collection, right? You can see the extent of this collection. There is a big collection. This is the spleen. This is the liver. If you can't identify the organs, we have different videos on it. Go through those videos as well, right? So spleen, liver, you can see edema in the pyloric part of stomach as well as the duodenum. So there is a lot of edema in this area, right? The stomach, the duodenum, you can see the tube going into the duodenum. If you follow the tube, let's finish that first. Is it entering the jejunum? The answer is no, right? It's ending here. So this is a misplaced tube, okay? The tube was supposed to enter the jejunum, ideally. So it should have been somewhere in this part of intestine, not here, right? So you want a nasojejunal tube in these cases and that is what was required in this patient. But this tube has come out basically, right? Lot of flea fluid in this area, right? So no points for guessing. We are dealing with acute pancreatitis, okay? With peripancreatic fluid collection. So this is entirely fluid collection. Important point practically and clinically in this is whether you have a normal tail of pancreas in this area. So you will have a head of pancreas. Okay. So you can see here the uncinate and part of head which is normal and then everything is abnormal. Right. So this is all fluid. This is all part of pancreatitis. But there is no normal pancreatic tissue in this area. That is important because if you have normal pancreatic tissue here, this tissue is going to leak juice and the disconnected duct syndrome is a very high possibility and that will not allow these collections to settle. So that is an important point to understand. 
only head tissue, we are okay because the ampulla is draining the juice. But if there is a disconnected part of pancreas which is opening into the collection, those collections usually don't dry up on their own. So that is one important point that you need to identify. Now, as you all know, the revised Atlanta classification, if you don't, we have a video on it. We have a short clip on it as well. So you should look into it. CT severity grading is something that you should know if you are looking and reporting scans like this. One very important point here is to identify air in the collection, right? So did you notice air in the collection in this CT? If yes, then you are doing good because there are specks of air which are extra luminal in the collection. And for that, you need to be very watchful. You see this speck of air, this is extra luminal, right? This is the colon, okay? And another important point here is that the colon is surrounded by a lot of collection and stranding. And this is very important clinically because this patient may end up with an ileostomy during the management process. So you can see some extra luminal air, okay, which is not a good sign when it comes to pancreatitis. And you can see a lot of stranding and a lot of ascites. So this is acute phase CT severity score is nearly 10. Again, another important point to see is splenic vein. Okay, so is splenic vein visible? In, now, in this case, the splenic vein is not visible, okay, because there is splenic vein thrombosis. So that is again an important point, splenic vein thrombosis. And that is why the splenic vein is not visible. You can see the splenic artery here arising from the celiac, but the splenic vein is not visible. And that is very commonly seen in cases of acute pancreatitis, right? So splenic vein thrombosis is there, severe acute pancreatitis, lot of ascites, lot of effusion, right lower lobe consolidation. You can see stranding, fat stranding, and it's a bad case of pancreatitis. So that is the diagnosis. You can also see ileus. You can also see the bowel loops that are very distended. Right? So if you want to confirm dilated bowel loops, you can see here more than 5 cm, right? So definitely dilated bowel loops. We are looking at small bowel ileus as well. And this is very commonly seen in cases of pancreatitis. So very important point in these cases you look at the position of the tubes, you look at the thorax, you look at the abdomen, you look at findings like intestinal edema, pericolic thickening, pericolic fluid collections can sometimes necessitate an ileostomy as the patient can go into small microcolonic perforations as a result of pancreatitis. And then these patients need a diversion to allow that area to Settle. So all these points are important when it comes to managing cases of pancreatitis. So I hope that this discussion helps you in understanding how to look at a scan of pancreatitis, what all findings to look for, how to discuss the case with your surgeon and for surgeon and practicing doctors to discuss it with the radiologist. Thank you.